CSGO developers have been rolling out fewer and fewer major updates over the last couple of years. Previous year, for example, there was literally not a single major update with a new game content. Not to mention the cosmetic items and maps that the community has been making themselves. People are so starved that even a seemingly small update with a change in the amount of bullets in the AVP has broken the player online record for 2022. Previously, developers were planning to release two operations and three weapon cases per year. But the deadline for the new case is now overdue by more than a few months and the operation is not looking to happen anytime soon. I spoke about all of this in the beginning of December in my Telegram channel, and even recent map rotation only affected Wingman mode, although there is still enough time before the major and it would be possible to test some new maps. So while the developers were in quarantine and working from home, they have released more than they are doing now. Anyhow, everything I've mentioned above is just a recap of publicly known information, and it doesn't certainly mean that the developers have been sitting idle and not doing anything. If we'll go a little bit deeper, we'll suddenly discover that there are some pretty good reasons for all of this. Max at the microphone again, and let's get right into it. We should start with a little theory about the purchase of ownership for the map called Anubis. For those who still don't know, it was originally created by GZ40, Yakuza and Royal. This case is particularly unusual, because in the history of CSGO the developers bought the rights from the map makers only twice. And the first, as many might think, is not related to cash. Because the rights for it still belong to the original author named Ephon Pon, and despite the tournament map pool, he continued to make all of the changes himself. The only map apart from Anubis is Mirage, the rights to which were bought out shortly after the game's release in 2012. So, for the first time in 10 years, the developers have stepped outside of their usual pattern of behavior. And from the looks of it, Anubis was bought out purely because the developers simply don't have enough time and human resources to make something similar from the ground up. Why they don't have enough manpower while having so many level designers and environment artists is a good question, the answer to which you'll find in this video. Skins Monkey, a CSGO trading site where you can instantly trade your old and rusty skins to something more new and shiny. Simply select a few of your current skins, see how much they're worth, pick a new one in the same price range, and if you need any particular item, you can always use the advanced filters in the middle. If you'll find any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Skins Monkey runs giveaway every day, week and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Use the code Gable and get 5 bucks for just doing trades. And buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. Anyone who has been following me for more than, let's say, 2 or 3 years already gets the relevance of regular leaks for future updates. They happen both accidentally and intentionally, when the developers purposely push some strings into the updates, so that fools like me start making as much noise as possible. For example, 2019 leaks of Shattered Web, 2020 leaks of Broken Fan, 2021 leaks of Riptide. Before 2018 there were several years in a row with Danger Zone leaks, and 2022 – nothing. Nothing but monthly leaks related to porting the game to a new engine. Is it a coincidence? I have no idea, but to continue the narrative we need to clarify one extremely important aspect of Valve's working culture. Basically, they have two working states. A depressed state, when the core developers split into small teams and like indie studios try to generate and prototype new ideas, most of which just fall apart, and a state of full steam ahead. When one of the teams manages to create something cool and all the teams come together like a transformer to scale the development and push the projects to release. In a depressed state, they cancel tons of games and projects, including a third Half-Life which prototypes have burst and died more than a dozen times. However, in full steam ahead state they've managed to release failed artifact, Half-Life Alex, Valve Index VR Helmet and Steam Deck. Full steam ahead state happens extremely rarely and it's a real creative marvel for the company. And right now there are three such miracles happening at the same time. Let's start from the beginning. The first mention of a game code named Citadel appeared in a 2018 beta version of Artifact. 
The file containing this information is called Resource Compiler, and inside it are some project names that can be specified in the game info configuration file. A year later, a new Counter-Strike project appeared in the same game info file of Artifact 2.0 relaunch. In 2021, shortly after the release of Half-Life Alex, another HLX project appeared in the Dota 2 files. And all of a sudden, on October 10th of the previous year, Valve registered a new patent for the game called Neon Prime. Registering trademarks in the entertainment industry is a common practice, even in the early stages of production. But Valve with their bipolar states just wouldn't do it without some significant reasons. And now to the best part. Citadel is a code name for Neon Prime. So they are not two different games as we thought before. This game has been in development for at least four years. And it was teased by Geoff Keighley in an interactive book about the process of making Half-Life Alex. Quote, Maybe there will be surprises as well, including a top secret new project that another small team at Valve has been working on since the first part of 2018. According to early information, the core developer of this project is Ice Frog, the creator of the original Dota. He stepped down from his role as a Dota 2 game designer to begin developing a new project inside Valve. Neon Prime is not connected to Dota as it was with Artifact and Underlords, and indirectly crossovers with the Half-Life universe can be similar to Portal. Counter-Strike is a port of CSGO to Source 2, the current iteration of which began its development between 2018 and 2019 and has been increasingly leaked for the past few years, especially while we were spying on the developers. And the third project, HLX, which is direct sequel to Half-Life Alex and which takes the place of Half-Life 3 in terms of timeline. Once again, Valve cancelled Half-Life 3 for over 10 times in various stages of development, and they may cancel this version as well. A lot of the information that has been leaked over the past few years and supposedly related to Citadel or Neon Prime is actually related to Half-Life X. Seventhly, things that are definitely confirm the development of some game in Half-Life universe. Personally, previous leaks were good enough for me, but now it's just impossible to deny. HEV suit plug the attach. NPC Houndai item attach and grenade launcher fire sticky. So the player will be able to plug and unplug the HEV suit somewhere. Most likely we are talking about the medical stations. Similar VR mechanics has been already done for the game Vertigo, the author of which helped Valve in the process of developing Half-Life Alex. Also, the player will have an opportunity to attach some items to NPC creatures. In this exact case, it's like the many-eyed dogs from the first Half-Life. And also, there is a grenade launcher with sticky bombs, similar to one that Demo Man from Team Fortress 2 has. The following strings are indicating the further development of some game in the Half-Life universe. And to be more particular, it refers to the interactions with the gravity gun, like pulling and throwing objects and changing the power. And this once again hints that the future game will be played as someone in a protective HEV suit with a gravity gun. All of the Valve games on the Source 2 utilize the same iteration of the engine. And because of this, it was quite difficult for us to identify which strings related to which project. But in the last couple of months, everything clicked into place. Why do I say us and where did all of this information come from in the first place? The point is that often, shortly before the release of a product from Valve, a so-called info dumps begin to fall on people like me. In a nutshell, this is when sources that may have been silent for years suddenly started giving details about new projects. And this is exactly what happened to me and Tyler. But the problem is that we both started receiving either different or conflicting information. For example, I say one thing, he asks his source and he says another thing. I ask him again and his other source suddenly agrees. We assume that Valve has started intentionally sharing different information with different people to see what comes out to the public and figure out who's leaking inside info. One of the main Tyler sources is a playtester for Neon Prime, and it's important to note that this is the same source that leaked trustful information about Half-Life Alex even before the official announcement. I've quite carefully filtered out all of the information and will only tell you things that line up well with leaked strings in other Valve games on Source 2. So, Neon Prime is a multiplayer third-person shooter taking place in the future long after the events of Half-Life. The main aim of this project is to take the best parts of CSGO and Team Fortress 2, combining this into a new esports game with a choice of player classes. The average duration of the game will be more like a Dota 2 rather than CSGO rounds and TF2 matches. Several different game modes are planned, but the standard game involves two teams fighting each other on the usual CSGO style maps with left, middle and right sides. 
During gameplay, players can upgrade their part of the map, something similar to the tower defense mechanics. Players can also power up or upgrade themselves by buying items that act as a special abilities, and it works kinda like active items in Dota. The main gameplay is designed for the PC, but since the game runs on the Source 2, options for phones and consoles are also being considered. But honestly, I have some doubts about it. There were no big CSGO updates previous year, allegedly because the developers, quote, wanna prepare teasers and announcements for the transition to the new engine by January, February. But I should remind you how Valve usually works and the Valve time phenomenon, so I wouldn't take this info seriously just yet. Well, and HLX, another iteration of Half-Life 3, which was originally designed for VR headsets but later switched to regular flat screen monitors. Development began shortly before Half-Life Alex was announced, just when they were finishing up the cliffhanger with the rewrite of the ending for the second episode. So, CSGO Source 2, announcements and teasers in the first or second quarter of 2023. New on Prime in third quarter, but maybe better will start earlier as it did with Artifact. NHLX should be expected in 2024-2025, unless, of course, it gets cancelled. Also, we just released our first CSGO skin. The art on it was inspired by the myth of alchemists and sorcerers. We basically did it in 3 months in our spare time, and since I worked with my wife, she was quite shy about posting it publicly, so support us in the workshop by clicking yes, adding to your favorites and giving us a couple of rewards. Link down below. Make sure to check out my previous video where I talk about more CSGO Source 2 leaks and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and writing some comments. Until next time, увидимся!